Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Now, the last couple weeks we've been sending out devotionals that are the teachings from the prior week of our Galatians study, but Sunday we didn't have our Galatians study, so we don't have a recording uh, because of Memorial Day. We'll pick right back up at it on Sunday here, June 6th. We will close out our Galatians study with Galatians 6. So next week for the devotional, you will get the Galatians 6 uh, last week's study. But today, I figured since there was a gap, I would talk about prayer. Matthew 6, it's what we call the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus talks about his kingdom values and living in those. In Luke 11, uh, he, he there ta- talks about prayer and what we call in Luke 11 and in Matthew 6, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Now, maybe you've heard that before. Maybe you even memorized it. Maybe you memorized it as a kid and you could say it quickly. Have you ever sat back and looked at the wording and the placement of those phrases and why they're there? I believe that when we do that, for those of us who don't know what to pray, we now could understand the Lord's Prayer and it become a tool for us to pray. And for those of us who are growing in prayer, it could be a continual tool as we build our prayer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dig in. Now in Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, it says, this is how you should pray. And in Luke 11, it actually says, and when you pray, say this. So it's a, it's a helpful tool for us. Our Father in heaven. That's how it starts off. Now, that's intentional because, uh, like I said, over the last three weeks On Sunday mornings, I've actually talked briefly in different ways about our identity in Christ, how God is our Father. And the Hebrew word for Father is Abba, which just basically means Daddy. So right off the bat, prayer starts with a title that isn't some distant title. No, it's an approachable, relational Father. Daddy starts off our prayer that way. And then it goes into hallowed be thy name or holy is your name. Basically, it's saying, Dad, your name is set apart. There's there's no one like you. I'm stoked to come before you because you are greater than anything else and anyone else. Holy is your name. You're set apart. Then it goes into your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what we need to realize is that our dad... Our Father, who's holy, is the King of kings. And so with the King comes a kingdom. And so when we're called to pray, your kingdom comes, your your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What we're saying are, God, the things that you are about, bring those things here to earth. Now here's the deal about prayer. There's a formational element to prayer. So as we are formed deeper in our relationship with God through prayer, what it does, it actually forms us more as kingdom people, which means that as we pray this, what happens is we embody the values of the kingdom and we live them out and we bring them into the world. And so as we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and we're formed into the things of the kingdom we participate in those things coming to earth. Next phrase, give us today what we need. Now give us today our daily bread. Give us today what we need. I I don't know about you, but I think about today and the next day and the week and the month and the future months and the year. And I think about all the details and all the what could happen Uh, and all the possibilities and with some things that I'm struggling with trusting God in the worst possible scenarios. And what this is saying, God, allow me to live in this moment trusting that you're just going to give me what I need. And then it goes into forgive us our sins or our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. What it's saying, and there's a parable that Jesus speaks about this, is it's saying that as our heart is transformed, as we see the forgiveness that God has given us, we are now called to step in and forgive others as they've done things against us. And then the last bit, we're used to hearing it as, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. But a better translation actually is, save us from the time of trial. Now, when we think about trial, What it means is that there are schemes against us and there's hardship in this world, which means temptation and hardship are things that we walk through. And so I think about two things. I think about 1 Corinthians 10 where it says that God is faithful. He says he will not allow us to be 
tempted beyond what we can bear, but with temptation, he will also find a way to escape. So God offers a way to escape in those moments of temptation. And so we, we ask him to make those moments aware and to save us from those things. And then also from the time of trial also includes hardship. Now here's the deal. God's not always going to remove hardship from you exactly the way you want it to. But I believe that salvation also, also often comes in the peace that is given to him as the psalmist says as, as he leads us and walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death, salvation and peace comes as we're aware of his presence with us in those moments. I hope this has been helpful for you as we've broken down the Lord's Prayer, as we've looked at it. Now, it's not in Scripture, but traditionally, what is it? It's for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for you forever and ever. Amen, right? Well, what that means As God, I come before you, Father, as King. And so these values, these things that I pray, these things that I'm shaped by is because I believe that you're powerful and your kingdom is great forever. I want to be found in that. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for our devotional today.